Hi everyone, this is Sue Reynolds with the Student Achievement Institute and we are ready to begin our next webinar for schools participating in our school counseling initiatives. Um, this webinar is to, um, the focus of this webinar is to help prepare for your next council meeting which is on activities. So let's just check the uh, technology real quickly. I want to make sure that um, that folks can hear us. And let's see. Let me I think I let me I'm going to unmute um, Amy Hedrick. Um, and let me see. Amy, can you hear me okay? And I don't know if Amy has a microphone on her computer where she's watching this. And let me do this. If someone could type in that they can hear, that would be great as well. Um, I just want to make sure we've got the audio before I go forward and the visual. So here we go. So Anna is saying yes. Natalie is saying yes. Uh, Krasana, yes. Mary, yes. Okay, perfect. Everybody can hear. <laughs> MC, that's good. Okay, so let's move forward. A um, couple things. Um, first of all, this is um, a kind of a transition point. Our foundations now are complete. Um, all of the work that you've been doing all year long have been either to write for the first time or to um, review and revise the foundations of your um, school counseling program. And so really this is, a, I think, a time for celebration because you've done a lot of work that's going to set those foundations um, that you'll be able to use for the next several years. Um, so now it's time for action. So now that we have goals and root causes, now we have to figure out, okay, what are we going to do about them? So in our action steps, we are implementing activities now to address the root causes that are associated with your focus goals. Um, for many of, in our, many of our schools, this is kind of um, a, a nice place because people have been like really wanting to get to action. They've been wanting to talk about, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And we've been kind of holding you back and going through this and holding them back, going through this process so that when we finally did get to actions, our actions would could be targeted. So now instead of just doing something because we had a hunch that it would be good for kids or, you know, we, we just like doing that kind of activity, now we can associate our actions directly with our goals and the root causes for those goals. So this is really going to give direction and purpose to your school counseling program and um, will we'll, um, be you'll be in a better position to realize those goals because your your actions are targeted. So we know that there's lots of different ways, lots of different groups that can um, that can implement activities. But in this initiative, we're talking about what the school counselors are doing. So today we're going to talk about the counselors. And then a little bit, um, we're going to bleed over just a little bit into the community organizations. Um, what we find is that some of the council members will have will be also thinking, well, our Boy Scout troop could do this, or our church could do this, or our business could help out here with this goal. So while we're focusing on counselor activities today, we're also going to enable the council members to say, you know, there's some other groups in our community that we think could help with these goals. So mainly counselors, but then right at the end we're going to say, is there anybody else that wants to help out? And then other groups can, can come forward if they want to. Okay, so I'm going to start a little differently this time because we have a lot to cover. Um, if you have looked at the process page for um, all of the work that needs to be done in April, my guess is you're feeling blown away and overwhelmed because there are, I think, four different sections for April and each of them have a lot of steps. So, but I wanted to just kind of reassure you that it's not nearly as much work as it looks like. There's really only four steps and um, I want to talk about those up front. Everything else in the online system are just tools that will help you do those steps. So, the first step 
is um, when you go into the system, and I'll actually go in right at the end of this webinar and kind of show you how to do this. But the first step is to enter social emotional issues. These are issues that have come up all year um, that are more social emotional based and would really cause you to want to put in counseling activities rather than guidance activities. We put in this step just because we want to make sure that the kids' social emotional needs don't get lost. Um, we're not going to discuss this with the council. It's just based on all of the other discussions and um, based on the, the student survey data. Um, we think at this point you have a good sense of what the issues are for your kids. And so we, this is a really simple data entry. You're just going to type those in. So, um, so that's, that's um, task one. Task two is to enter your current school counseling activities. This is the task that's going to take you the most time. Um, if you are a renewing school, it's just a matter of updating those activities, so that won't take you, you know, hardly any time at all. If you're a brand new school, first year RSC um, or uh, school, um, you would need to type in every single one of your activities. Um, and that will take some time because, as we all know, you probably are doing 60 or 70 different activities. So this is going to take a chunk of time. Um, we've made the data entry as much as we could, um, just boxes to check. And um, um, so, you know, we, we hope to save you time in that. Um, but basically, um, you're just entering everything that you do, including the non-program non activities. One caution in this section, Sometimes, especially with it being towards the end of the school year, and we know everybody's really, really busy, sometimes schools will try to take a shortcut by lumping their activities together. So they may have like one activity called classroom guidance, and then you know they describe the the 18 different classroom guidance activities that they do all within the description of one activity that's called classroom guidance. So um, that is problematic down the road. So even though it's a huge time saver to group activities like that, we really encourage you to separate out all of your activities so that later as we're looking at the impact of those activities, we can look at each activity individually. So, um, so yeah, so that's, this is probably the biggest task to do is just to get all the activities entered into the, into the system. Okay, so that's task two. Then task three is to hold, um, is to conduct, to convene your council meeting. And uh, I'll walk through that today with you. It's, it's not a real difficult meeting to facilitate. Um, and then finally, um, after that council meeting, you will know how you want to tweak your current activities to turn them into next year's activities. So after the council meeting, you'll know there's some activities we're doing now that we, we don't need to be doing. We're going to omit those activities. There are activities that we need to add because in order to reach our focus goals, we need to beef that, that part of our work up a little bit. So we're going to add some activities. Or you may decide you want to expand some activities. So after your council meeting, you'll be able to go back into the system where you've entered the current activities and then just tweak those to or or adjust them so that they become your next year's activities. Um, okay, so and again, at, towards the end of this webinar, I'll go in and, and um, show you how to exactly how to do that in the system. Okay, then the next part of the process page, if you scroll down the page, you come to a section called activity checks. And I'm looking at that section. If I'm a, a you know a, one of one of you, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's 15 steps on that. Um, that's that's a lot of steps. But what I want to point out: notice that there's no um, icons in the enter column. All of these things are reports that will help you analyze the activities that you're thinking about doing next year. You don't need to do any data entry. That's the one nice thing about working with um, an online system is that the computer is able to take different things that you've entered um, previously and to put them into these different reports. So there's um, 14 different reports here. 
And I also want to point out that all but six of them are optional. So these are reports that you may want to look at, um, but you know there's no requirement to submit and there's no requirement even that you look at them. We just put these in um, really as a just a helper for you so that as you're reviewing your activities, you can really good, get a good sense of what your activities are doing. So um, to look at this, um, these, these crosswalks, I want to break them down for you a little bit. Um, the first four crosswalks are the most important ones. Those are the ones that are going to tell you, does our program make sense? So I want to talk through these just quickly. In the priority goals crosswalk, that report is going to list each of your priority goals. And then it's underneath each goal, it's going to list the activities you're doing in order to reach that goal. If you have an activity, if, if you have a goal for which there are no activities, you'll get a little red flag that says, oops, you're not doing any activities to help your students reach this goal. You know, how, how do you want to resolve this? One way to resolve it would be to take out the goal. So, and that's perfectly okay. You can go back and say, oh gosh, I guess we really don't have time to do that goal or we don't have any activities aligned with that goal. We just need to get rid of that goal and just take it out. The other thing you could do um, is you could um, uh, add an activity so that you are addressing the priority goal. So this is just, this is maybe the biggest um, question of, you know, does this make sense or not? Um, you know, we're just looking, are your activities really going to enable you to reach your goals? Okay, same thing with the social emotional issue. Um, this is just going to list your issues and then it will list the activities under each issue. And same thing, if there's an issue that you say you're working on but we're not seeing any, any activities that would help you work on it, then you'll get a red flag and then you have a choice. Either take that issue out as, you know, you're not going to work on it next year. Um, or add an activity so that you can be working on it. So, okay, on the third one, the third report is a lot like the first one, except the parts are in different orders. So in the third report, we're gonna list the activity, each activity, and then under each of your activities, we'll list what goals that activity addresses. And you may have some activities that aren't addressing any of your goals. And then the question is, why are you doing the activity? If it's not helping you reach your goals, why are you doing it? And then you have, again, the, question, the choice. You can either take that activity out, or you might say, oops, we forgot a goal, that we really do want to do that activity, and the goal that we have, we, we didn't put in the system that that activity addresses. So we're going to go back and add, add a goal. Or you can say, we need to take that activity out. We're going to save some time. It's not aligned with any goal. We, you know, we've just been doing it out of, you know, because we've always done that activity. And, you know, let's save some time. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so that's a third report. And then the fourth report, as part of your work in your focus goals, you entered student gap groups. In other words, there were some student groups that you thought were going to have a more difficult time reaching um, the, the goal than, than their peers. So a lot of times that's the free and reduced lunch students, or it may be um, your you know, males, or, or for some reason there's a group of kids that, doesn't have, that don't have the opportunities or the funding or, um, or something that they need in order to um, make the choice, the, you know, meet the goal that you've, you've written. So um, in this activity, we're listing each of your, in this report, we're listing each of your focus goals, the gap groups that you've identified for those focus goals, and then the activities you've put in place to close that gap. So in other words, let's say it's, um, the goal was to take the FAFSA, and um, you've identified a gap group as being your free and reduced lunch kids because they don't have, um, um, because you're thinking that they don't have maybe the opportunity to learn about the FAFSA as much or, or whatever. 
and then you're putting in the activities that you're doing to help target especially that student group. Um, another example might be AP, taking an AP test is the choice that you want kids to, to take, to do. And again, your gap group might be your free and reduced lunch because they don't have the funding to, um, to, to register for the test. And so in the activity, you're saying how you're going to get funding to those kids. You're either going to offer a scholarship or make sure that they're aware of resources from College Board or, or whatever. So, okay, so one, two, three, four. These things are, are, are just tools for you to help you think about, does my program make sense? Or, you know, is everything aligned so that I can reach my goals? Okay, so those are the first four crosswalks. The next two crosswalks are there because we think that you are working towards the Indiana Gold Star School Counseling Award or the ASCA Ramp Award. So these crosswalks are going to, the, the Indiana crosswalk is going to list every single one of the uh, indicators in the uh, Indiana competencies for students. And then under each indicator, it will show you the activity that you have in place to address that indicator. For the Gold Star Award, you have to have an activity in place to hit every indicator. So luckily, one activity might address four or five indicators. Um, so you know that that's fine. And and for many schools, you're hitting 95% of the indicators already. So you may just need to tweak your activities a little bit to make sure that you are getting all of the indicators in. So that's the Indiana crosswalk. And again, in Indiana, you are required to hit all of the indicators with activities, every single indicator. For ASCA, on the ASCA mindsets and behaviors, ASCA's philosophy is a little different. Instead of asking you to address all of the mindsets and behaviors, ASCA asks you to look at your local student data to figure out which mindsets and behaviors are the most important for you to work on, and then to have activities to work on those mindsets and behaviors. So what we would suggest you do there is look at your focus goals, look at the ASCA mindsets and behaviors, find the similarities, and check off the mindsets and behaviors that align with your focus goals. Um, because then we know you'll have activities in there for the focus goals and you'll be, you'll be all set for ASCA. So, okay. Now, these other things, um, let's just look quickly at these. Um, on the next two optional reports are just to give you some extra information. The Guidance Knowledge Crosswalk, um, the guidance knowledge statements were, you said for your priority goals, this, these, this is the knowledge that kids need in order to make these choices. So in this report, we're going to list each knowledge statement and then show you where that knowledge is being taught in your activities. Um, and again, if, you know, if you've got some knowledge that you are saying kids need to know and it's not being addressed in any of your, your activities, you'll just get a little red flag that will let you know that you're not teaching that knowledge anywhere. Um, same thing on the student opportunities crosswalk. We've just listed our um, ASAs suggested opportunities for school counseling programs. And then we're just showing you which of those opportunities your activities are hitting and which they're not. Um, and again, there's no expectation on our end on any of this. This is just information for you. Um, and then the rest of this is our crosswalk crosswalks with external expectations. So this next report, the Indiana Graduation Pathways Crosswalk, that's only um, used by schools with grades 6 through 12, um, but it aligns all of your activities with the graduation pathways um, so that you can show your administrator or your school board or your community, this is how our school counseling program is helping kids meet the requirements in the graduation pathways. Um, the next report is the Indiana Social uh, Emotional Learning Competencies. Um, if that's something that you are into and you, you um, are kind of um, really enjoying those, those competencies from Indiana and you want to see how you're aligned with them, um, same thing. It'll, this report will give you each of the competencies and show you how your activities align with them. 
Um, same thing on the, the DOE's multi-tiered system of support. Um, this will show you, the, this will sort your activities by tier one, tier two, tier three, um, so that you can see, um, you know, how those activities are, are aligned. And 21st Century Scholars Crosswalk, a lot of our high schools use this crosswalk heavily. Um, as you know, in Indiana, the students, in order to qualify for this scholarship, uh, students have to be involved in 16 different guidance activities. And this will show you um, how, what your school counseling program is doing to enable students to meet the 16 different guidance requirement activities. So um, guidance activities requirements. Um, so that's a, in the high school, I think this is a really valuable report. And then if your school receives federal funding, Title I or Title IV, this just um, lists the, um, the uh, school counseling parts of those titles and, um, and then shows you how your activities are uh, aligned with those. Um, especially if you're a Title I school, this is, this is kind of helpful for your on-site monitoring for Title I. Um, so that when people come in, you'll be able to say, you know, this is how our program helps with parent involvement, or this is how our part, our program helps with student transitioning. Um, and then same thing with, with Title IV. So, okay, so those are all the crosswalk reports. Um, just wanted to talk through them quickly. You don't have to do anything with this page. Um, just open up the reports. Um, okay. Then, the last two sections on the process page, um, this section, the Community Partners um, Soft Launch, um, in RSC, we're not launching Community Partners as a program, although you might choose to do that on your own, um, but we do know that it just kind of happens in this meeting that community organizations will start to step up and say, oh, I could help with that goal. You know, would you like me to, you know, take kids to, to visit a college campus? And, or maybe there's a church group that's going to some retreat on a college campus and the, the church leaders are, you know, willing to talk about post-secondary ed while they're there. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that your community members could be helping to uh, address your goals. And if they do, um, what we want to um, be able to have you be able to do is to enter those in your system so that you're able to capture all the different folks that are delivering activities. Um, so basically, you would just enter, you know, the, um, the name of the organization, um, the, you know, such and such business or such and such church or, you know, Boy Scout troop or whatever, and then um, you would enter their, their activities. The activities go into the system the same way that your um, that your counseling activities do. It's just the very first question says, you know, what kind of activity is this? And you would say this is a community-based activity. Okay, and then finally, at the bottom, again, notice on these there's no submit on, on any of this stuff. Um, at the bottom, these are all just reports of your foundations. So it's your foundation's all in one place. So your roster, your vision, your priority goals, focus goals, activities, your annual calendar. Um, this is an automated report as well. Um, and then finally, the master plan puts everything together. This is our, these are our goals. These are the root causes. These are the activities. And it kind of lumps them all together for you. Um, and then, so this is just all something for you to, to look at. And then, um, at the um, at the end of this, if you're happy with all of your foundations, you can choose to publish your foundations online for the public to see. If you click this, um, it'll ask you, do you want to publish your, your, your foundations? You say yes. And then what our system does is it creates a web page and gives you a URL so that you can um, put that URL on your school's website or maybe in a newsletter or whatever and it will, your public will be able to open up a page where they have access to these different reports. Um, a lot of schools like to put that as a link um, on, their, on their school page. So, okay. So that's the, an overview of the, um, 
of the process page, but the one thing I really wanted you to see, I'm going back here, is four tasks. It looks like a ton, but it's four things for you to for you to look at. Um, okay. So um, let's go on then to the. This would be a really good place to ask questions too, if anybody has any. Um, I am not seeing any questions, I don't think. Let me check one other place. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to go on now to the uh, council meeting. Okay, so um, council meeting six on activities, and um, we are looking at the agenda to begin with. So quick review, talking about the council activities, soft launch on the community activities, and then a little bit of talk on the on the future. Okay, so here's the review. We've I've condensed this into one slide. Um, and basically, we're just saying, you know, all of the foundations are are in, and we're now looking at the final step for this year, which is to look at activities. Okay, so there are two reports that you you will print and pass out to your council members. One is called the Focus Goals Report, and your your council members will have this report, so um, at some point, you know, we'll want to walk through it with them. But I just wanted to give you a heads up um, right now. And first of all, on this report, there are the focus goals. So you can see here is one focus goal, have a written plan for their future that includes blah, blah, blah. You'll see that the group that we have that goal for is listed here. So, and this is a real school's goal work, by the way. But they have this goal, and it's for all students. So it's not just for their 11th graders or their boys. It's for every student in the building. Then we have their target data. And this is really important to look at before you get to activities. Um, because you can see in this school, for example, they want to go from their current data, 28% of the students have a plan for their future, to 100%. So that's a big jump, 28% to 100%. It's doable, but um, but but you know it's going to take some some careful planning. So um, and then also in this report, um, we've listed for this focus goal the root causes, things that are getting in the way. So you've got one report, but it's got it's just for this one focus goal, and then after this one there'll be another focus goal, and it brings everything together: the goal, your root causes. Your baseline data and your target data for that for that goal. The other report that you're giving to everyone is the focus goals activity re report. This has um, the kind of same information. Here's the the focus goal. Um, you know, here's the grade levels we have that goal for the student groups. Um, it, but this time we're we're also talking about the activities. So. Here's the activity. Here's the grade level for that activity. Here's the students that are participating in that activity. Here's the instructional level. So is it introduction? Is it to update? Is it to um, review? Um, so you've got the instructional level for that activity. And then you've got the percentage of students participating in that activity. So, okay, so that's good to know too, because as we're looking at your activities, your current activities, we're going to want to know, you know, are these activities really going to, um, you know, have, have the result of those activities be the realization of your goal? Will these activities bring about your goal? Okay, so. Um, so, okay, so also with your, um, and actually, on these two slides that I just put up, 
Those are going to come up later in the presentation too. I just wanted to make sure that you saw those up front. So you may want to take those out before um, you make copies of handouts for your for your council. Oops. Um, then let me go back. Okay, so we're thanking your council members for you know attending all of your meetings. Um, you're letting them know that the foundations are complete. This is really exciting. And now we're we're turning a corner and we're moving to action. So um, this is the introduction to activities. And again, we're you know, telling your council today, we're talking about the counselor activities. Um, here are types of activities. Um, this is review. You might decide you want to you know, go back and get some of those old slides when we first uh, uh, introduce the types of activities. Um, or you may think that your council members are fine with just this quick review of the different types of, of counseling activities. Um, then we're also telling folks that, that not only are there different kinds of activities, there are different activity settings. So as we're talking about activities, we're talking about things we can do one-on-one -on -one with kids, um, that we can do individual guidance with kids, um, we can do individual counseling with kids, we can do group guidance with kids where we talk with a, a classroom or a small group of kids that we've brought in, or we can do group counseling where we're counseling um, with, with several students um, in a group setting. So we just want your council members to realize that some of this is one-on-one -on -one and some of this is with groups. Okay, then for the discussion, we're reviewing the tasks. We're saying, okay, we're going to review and revise our current activities. Then we're going to add activities if we need to for our focus goals. And then we're going to do a consensus check. We're also going to do a capacity check at the end. Um, so the first step is reviewing and revising our current activities. And we're going to look at each activity um, that come under our focus goals and decide which activities do we need to keep, revise, or omit. Okay, so here's the review and revise. So um, we're telling folks collectively when we look at our activities, they must um, address our school's focus goals, and then they also must address any external expectations that are important to us. I would edit out any external expectation that's not important to your school, that you, you don't, you know, that's not something you're working toward. So if you're not a Title I school or if you don't, it's not important to align your work with Title I, then take Title I out. If you're not planning on applying for the RAMP award, take RAMP out. Um, so, okay. So then you have made posters. Um, and this will spit out of our online system. It's the activity discussion prompt. There's one poster for each of your pro focus goals. There's also a poster for each of your priority goals. Um, and But we're, we're only focusing on your focus goals. We gave you the priority goals just in case you wanted to discuss with your council one of your priority goals but you don't have to. There's no expectation that you do that. The only expectation is that you talk about your focus goals. Okay, so you've got a poster like this for each of your focus goals. You're saying um, that the focus goal is to have a written plan uh, for the future that includes. And then you're looking at each of your activities and deciding whether or not you should keep that activity, um, revise it, or omit it. So um, you're just looking through, and at one at a time you're doing that. You're going to say keep, revise, or omit, the first three columns here. And then, um, then there's columns for new and park. So at the end of this discussion about your current activities, then you're going to ask, you know, let's really think about this goal. Do we need to do other things um, to really help um, our students make this choice? So remember, in this school, they wanted to get to 100%, but um, the problem is that when I look at the percentage of students that are um, participating in these activities and have been linked with this goal, I'm only seeing you know, just um, a couple of 100%, and maybe it's enough. I want to look over 100% 
uh, fall senior meetings? Well, absolutely. They could they could teach um, they could have students create a written plan in their fall senior meetings. They could have their seniors do that. But now I've got the rest of the students to worry about. So when I scroll down here, um, I'm looking at uh, graduate graduation tracking and tracking credits. Now is that really where I'm going to have students? Um, do a four-year course plan, you know, and, and a future plan, you know, that's questionable to me. Then I come down to 100% scheduling meetings. Absolutely, it could happen there. And if I were to scroll down, they also have some um, curriculum activities in the classroom where they're meeting with all students. So, so yeah, so when I look through this, you know, maybe this one that only 6% of the students participate in, maybe that's something I can get rid of and, and save time. Uh, maybe not. You know, we just have to kind of look at them um, and and see how that how that fits. Okay, so we're looking at our current activities, and then we're asking about do we need new activities? And again, for each focus goal, um, we want to know you know what new activities should our school counselors implement next year. So, um, so what should we consider? How quickly do we want to improve to get from 28% to 100%? You know, for some schools, this is going to uh, require some, um, you know, some some uh, some beefy activities. Um, we want to consider our root causes. Are we really addressing the root causes? Are we really addressing the knowledge that kids need to know? Are we teaching that? Um, and then also, we want to consider the 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 percentage of students who are currently participating in, in those activities, in the current activities. You know, we we need, may need to add some activities. If so, we may also need to delete some activities to make time for the activities that we need. So there's kind of a prioritization that comes in this as well. Okay, so here's the example that we've been kind of alluding to that you can share with your council. This is a real school's example. Um, all students who have a written plan for their future, so there's their focus goal. Here's their, here's the focus goals report, and we can see that it's for all students. We can see how big the jump is in the percentage. We can see the things that are getting in the way. And so we kind of know where we're going and what's keeping us from getting there. Now we can start thinking about activities. So we look at the activities report, and we, um, see that there are some activities that are designed to introduce, um, there's some that are designed to reinforce the concept, and there's some that are designed to update. So that's really good. Um, um, we look at the percentages, and we can see, as we mentioned before, some are you know small percentages, some are large percentages, and then, um, and then we really look at these activities. And in this case, they've got you know the two uh, classroom guidance activities that they're doing through a teacher advisor program. They have the scheduling meetings that are reaching 100% of the kids. Um, and and so you know I think my belief is that yeah I think we can get from 28% to 100% by adding these activities in um, and and doing these activities next year. So okay. So after you've talked about all of your activities, so the activities discussion is finished, it's really important to do a capacity check. Um, one of my fears in this point, and probably yours too, is that your counselor is going to be saying, oh, our counselor should do this and this and this and this and this. And before you know it, you've got, you know, you've got 10,000 new activities to do. So all through this, though, I think that by now, your council members understand that your plates are full and that if they want to do something um, new that maybe has more impact, we're going to take need to take something off the plate that maybe has less impact. So this is not about just adding on to the counselors. And at this point, we, we want to check two things to make sure that we have the capacity to implement the program that's being designed. So on the first slide here, we're looking at uh, the percentage of time that your council and you um, uh, allocated to the different types of counseling activities, school counseling activities. So you might need to say to people, you know, we only allocated 4% of our counselors' time to doing guidance activities, 
and you know we just added on six new activities and you know that's going to take their time away from counseling and put it in the guidance and we really said we only wanted four percent of their time on guidance so we just kind of want to do a an, again a little bit of a crosswalk about um the uh, the activities that are being planned and the amount of time that's available for them so um so and this is also um the time where it's really important for the counselors on the steering team to step up to say oh my gosh i would love to do all this stuff but i just don't think that we have the capacity for doing it and um also, if you're a steering team member that's not a counselor, this is a wonderful time for you to step up on behalf of the counselor and say, you know, Susie is a wonderful counselor and I know her heart is here and she would love to do all this stuff, but I'm really afraid that we're spreading her too thin and, and to kind of have that discussion. If you find that you're worried about being spread too thin, you probably are being spread too thin. Um, and if you're worried, you you can then suggest that um, we need to get rid of rid of one of our focus goals. We need to you know not implement all of our new activities all at once. We need to take more of our current activities out of the picture, the ones that are less impactful. Um, somehow there has to be a, you know a, something a, a resolve to this issue because if you overload your counselors everything will end up being done in a mediocre way you'll be much farther ahead to do fewer things in a really good way so something to think about and this is the final check to make sure that we're not going over capacity for your counselors next year um, remember to counselors that on those focus goals the expectation will be that you're going to see the data improve so you've got to hit those focus goals if there's something where you're not sure that if the data is going to improve, um, then we need to either adjust the activities or possibly get rid of the goal if it's not something that we're going to be able to reach. So, okay, something to think about there. And then the other thing we want to think about is do we have the resources? If there's funding that needs to be available um, in order to you know, buy materials for an activity, do we have that funding? Um, is the, if there's a expertise that needs to be in place, um, do we have that expertise? If not, do we have the professional development in place? Do we have the technology do, that we need? And, you know, if the perceptions of the counselor are going to get in the way of us being able to do that activity. So, what what resources are are not there um, that you'll need to address in order to pull off the activities? Um, and again, if you can't get those resources, then the activities need to go. Um, otherwise, they'll just be done in a haphazard way or in a way that's not successful. So, um, and, and on the other hand, you know, maybe again, somebody in the community will step up and say, you know, I could fund that activity, um, or I could send you to this professional development workshop or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, so these are the two capacity questions. Do we have the time? And do we have the resources to do the activities that we just that we've planned for next year? Okay, so then the final thing is the consensus check. So we're just asking everybody, you know, if this is the final discussion before we actually get to implementation. You know, can we live with these activities that will make up our school counseling program? Can we support them publicly? And again, you know, as a counselor, if you're feeling that, you, that the program is asking too much of you, this is the place to speak up. Um, everyone you know, on your council by now, they know where your heart is. They know that you're working your tail off for kids in their community. And I think there'll be a lot of respect and to your honesty if you step up and say, oh my gosh, I think, I think this is too much and we need to, we need to think about this some more. Hopefully that's been happening all through this process. And um, where you are at this point, you, you won't need adjustments. But if you do, this is the place to make them because after this, you know, the expectation is going to be that that data with your focus goals, um, that that data improves. So we've got to make sure that you're in a position to, to make that data improve. So, okay. Um, so 
that's that. And then the final part, and then I'll pause for questions again. Um, I'm sorry, there's two more parts. Community activities, um, we're just in this part acknowledging for everyone that it doesn't have to be just school counselors that implement activities. It could be parents, it could be teacher advisors, it could be classroom teachers, it could be community organizations. And so we're just asking your, your council members, you know, are there any of you that want to come in as partners that you think with our focus goals that you could do something to help? Um, and, you know, I've, I've written here community partners, but also maybe classroom teachers that say, yeah, I could do that in my third grade. You know, I could do this in my third grade class in this English unit um, that could complement, you know, one of your focus goals. So we're just getting folks to think about, you know, are, is there anybody that wants to come in as a partner? It might be the Boy Scout troop. It might be your third grade teacher, you know, whatever. How could they help with your focus goals? And then finally, um, we're asking them, you know, what could you do? So you may find that everybody says, you know, no, we don't want to be a partner. We're happy to be on your council, but we don't want to do any activities. And, and that's fine. Uh, but you may also find that folks say, yeah, I could take, you know, I could sponsor a field trip or I could, you know, have kids research careers as part of my lesson on how to do a research paper. Um, you know, so there's, there's lots of ways that this could integrate outside of just what the school counselors do. And we just want to allow that to happen here if it's naturally happening, um, but it doesn't have to happen. It just depends on where your council wants to go. Okay. Um, and then finally, a quick talk about the future. So after today, you're telling your council members um, that you, um, the steering team, you're going to be doing a lot of quick checks to make sure that your activities are doing what you want them to do. So you're going to do some checks just within your own program, our activities addressing our program goals, our social and emotional issues, our gap groups. Um, you'll do a quick check there. You're going to do a check with the Indiana Gold Star Awards and the, the, ASCA, um, the ASCA Ramp Award to make sure you're all in line with your activities and those expectations. And then, you know, possibly some of these state expectations and federal expectations. Again, I would remove from this page everything that you're that you're not worried about aligning with. Okay, and then finally, we're giving your council members a warning here that the activities that they just came up with, there may be some tweaks to those as you discover um, problem areas through these crosswalk reports. So a couple times we've had council members that have come back and said, well, where did that activity come from? And so we just want to give them a heads up that you may need to add some activities in um, because of, especially because of these external expectations. So, okay. Then another heads up for your council is the activities may change a little bit as the counselors within your district start to talk about coordination. Um, if you are the only school doing RSC, this may not be an issue for you. But if you are in a district where all the schools are doing RSC, what we often find is that the counselors will, you know, light bulbs will go off and they'll start to say, you know, we could articulate our guidance curriculum vertically uh, or horizontally between, you know, multiple elementary schools. So you're just giving your council a heads up that you're going to be, you know, maybe working with coordination between buildings and that, um, as you look, you, there, there may be an effort to coordinate activities vertically with your the schools that send students to you and the schools that get your students um, so that the program builds from grades K through 12. And if so, you may need to tweak your activities a little bit. Um, you're also telling them that if, if, if there's more than one elementary in your district that, you know, the elementaries may want to coordinate between elementaries so that all students get the similar experiences. And if so, you may need to tweak. And you may end up tweaking terminology. Maybe one of the middle schools calls an event a career fair and another school calls it a career expo. And you're just, you know, wanting to uh, coordinate the terminology across the district a little bit. So again, there's no requirement on our end um, or on uh, Gold Star or ASCA that you coordinate between buildings. We just find that this tends to happen at this point 
and we wanted to give your council members a heads up that because of that, things may, may change a little bit. Okay, and then finally, next year, um, the, um, we're giving folks just kind of a heads up of what this will look like next year. And um, for most folks, um, this is a um, um, kind of a relief because there's not meetings that happen every month. Um, and actually, I'm looking at this and I see I put the wrong slide in. I'll adjust this and then re and then re-upload to our online system. There are um, there's actually only um, uh, one meeting that we feel very strongly about, um, and that's this third meeting in April. We'll suggest to you that you have a meeting with your council in October just to kind of kick off your activities. Then there will be um, in a, a meeting in January, halfway through the year, to just kind of be a it's kind of like a show and tell of what happened during the first semester, and then kind of a heads up of here's what's coming second semester. And then the the big meeting that we feel strongly about is this last meeting in April. Um, we recommend that next year you survey your students again so that you have your follow up data. And then at this uh, foundations meeting in um, in um, May or in the summer, you're looking at the new student data, and if necessary, you're updating your foundations. What's most common in this is that some schools will reach their focus goals, um, and if so, then you don't need them as focus goals anymore. Then they go back, then they become priority goals, and you tackle something else as a focus goal. So the biggest thing in this annual meeting um, is to update your your um, your focus goals and you know to look at what 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 lessons you're learning from the student data so okay um, next year just kind of a heads up we'll send you an email in January with a you know saying that the um, survey is coming and then um, we'll you'll get another communication from us in April that says that the um, um, that gives you resources to conduct this annual meeting with your council okay that's it. We're thanking your council, and this is your last council meeting. So, you know, a lot of schools will want to do celebrations of some sort um, as a thank you for for your council members for coming to all these discussions. Okay, I'm going to go look for questions, and then the last thing I want to do is show you how to enter those activities. And I've um, give me a chat. And I'm not seeing any questions there. And I'm not seeing any new questions there. Okay, last thing is to look at how to get activities in. So, um, uh, let's see if there's anything in here oh, I want to mention. There is a pre meeting memo. That gives um, that reminds your council members about your focus goals, and gives them some links where they can research possible activities before they come to your meeting. Um, I take a look at this tool, and if you want to send that out, fine. We made it optional. We know that time is really of essence right now, and um, so we made that an optional step. Um, Here's where you enter your social and emotional issues. That's pretty easy. You just um, add a new, new issue. What issue do you wish to address? You know, and here's some examples. Across the state, almost in every school that we've worked with, um, the two top uh, issues are stress, student stress, and fear failure. That tends to come up really high on the student surveys, and a lot of schools will put that in as issues they want to address. Um, okay, going back to the process page, and let's see, I'm here to enter school counseling activities. So I'm going to take maybe five minutes to go through this page. Um, so when I get to the activities page, um, you'll see that as activities are entered, they appear down here, and you can edit the activity, you can pull up a report that tells you about that activity, or you can delete it. To initially put the activities in, um, you can you'll enter a program activity as this first step, 
Or the other choice you have is to enter a parking lot activity. And that means that you don't want to do that activity right now, or but you want to save it for the future. So you can put it in the system and then park it. Um, if you decide to omit an activity that you're currently doing, you can take take it out, you can change it to a parked activity that keeps everything in our system. It just takes it out of your current activities. Okay, when entering activity. So first of all, you can see here's, it's, this is an active activity. You can change it to a parked activity right here, real simple. Activity title. Um, make this, please, something descriptive. Um, if you say, you know, fifth period chat, we don't know what that is. Um, neither does your public. So um, please make your titles as, as descriptive as possible. In the description, we're not looking for books, but we are looking for something that's descriptive. So usually um, my favorite descriptions are like two sentences long. And they talk about what's going to happen, who's going to participate, how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. So, you know, and, and that information you can kind of, you know, with, with a little work, you can get that into just a couple sentences. Um, so, again, this is not like a procedure. It's just a quick description of, of what's happening. Um, activity type. This is really important, and you'll notice that when I choose different activity types, it's going to customize the rest of, the rest of this page. So um, if, if um, and we've separated um, guidance into three types of guidance, academic, career, personal, social. Um, if one of your activities is more than one area, just pick the one that is, it's the most. So, um, so yeah. Okay, and then the delivery method, um, you can edit your delivery methods here. So here's, and you can see nothing popped up there because I don't have any delivery methods in yet for the school. I'm gonna check that I'm working on my delivery method for this year. I'm also, I know I'm gonna keep doing counseling, so I'm just gonna keep doing the future years as well. And then I'm going to save, and then, when I go back, um, oops, I'm going to need to refresh that page. Um, yeah, now my delivery method is here that I have um, so far. If you start to have community organizations or teachers that are implementing activities as well, then you'll want to go in and add those delivery methods to, to your program. Okay, activity purpose. This one um, really customizes everything. So the, the, the most important purpose is to meet your own school's goals. So when I click that, um, all of your priority goals pop up, and this is where we're developing that crosswalk. So you're going to check um, the priority goal that the activity is, is helping to um, bring about, or you're going to check that this activity is not designed to address any specific goal. So this may be like a general counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling or something like that that's really not focused on one of your specific goals. Okay, so there's your program goals. That's where we're building that crosswalk. Um, then I can also say um, this is going to meet an external requirement. And this is where you're going to have to decide are there any of these external requirements that are important to you? Um, the one from my per personal perspective, the one that if I were a high school counselor would be really important to me is this Indiana 21st Century Scholars um, because I want to make sure that my scholars have the programming they need to qualify for their scholarship. Um, every time you check one of these, it's going to customize the rest of the website, the rest of this entry page, except for district requirements because we don't know what your district requirements are. So, okay, so I'm going to leave that one checked because I want you to see how this customizes everything. Um, okay, and here it is. I've now, the system is now added in 21st Century Scholars down here. That was not there before I checked that. Um, you also see that it's listed here. Okay, okay. So um, 
then um, I, this also could be an activity that addresses my school's social and emotional issues. If I check this, I'm going to be asked for, I don't have any social emotional issues in for this demo school yet, but it will list your social emotional issues and you'll just check the one that, um, that it's addressing. So we're building crosswalks in this section. Okay, then because we suspect that you are all working toward Indiana Gold Star and Ask a Ramp, we, um, we pulled those out to just make sure that you do these and that they didn't get forgotten. Um, so in Indiana competencies, um, I'm going to open that up. So these are all of the indicators in Indiana, and there are a bunch of them. Um, but what I'd like you to remember is that one activity could address four or five of these. And probably 95 or more percent of these you are already doing in your activities. It's just a matter of documenting that for the Gold Star Award. And the way you document it is to just check them off. Um, so if you're working towards Gold Star, your activities combined have to address every single one of these indicators. The crosswalk report will show you which indicators you're not currently meeting after you get all of your current activities in there. So, okay, and then one other tip on this page. I personally, I find it hard to find the indicators. Um, so what I like to do is Control F, and then I'll type in like career interest. And then it will, you know, it will highlight the indicators that have the words career interest in them. So, um, so that's just a way, you know, when I'm, whatever the activity is, I'll do control F and put in a few keywords. And then I'll look at the indicators that have those this, this similar keywords in there. Um, and to, to, you know, so I don't have to read every single indicator for every single activity. Just makes it for me go a little quicker. Okay. So, um, ask a mindsets and behaviors. Here they are. Um, the mindset starts with M's, the um, behaviors start with B's, and you can see there's not as many of them. Um, and we just need to make sure that you're, you've checked the ones that align with your focus goals. Okay, um, gap crosswalk. Um, question is, have you designed this activity in a way that addresses the specific needs of one or more of your gap groups. So if you want to find out what are my gap groups, if I click here, my, you know, here is my, my focus goal, and then um, here are the gap groups, and you can, you know, you can look down and see which gap groups you, you've checked. Okay, that's a reminder of what your gap groups are. Then you might say, no, I'm not, this activity is not designed to meet the needs of my low and my pre reduced lunch kids. But if you say yes, then you're going to get a couple more questions. It's going to say which group, so free and reduced, and it's going to say what other special needs. And let's let's say this was an activity about a the two that we a, a focus goal related to kids choosing to take the AP test. So the special needs are funding um, for testing. And then what are you going to do? We're going to create um, an AP test scholarship. And then we're going to communicate uh, college board um, resources to students, funding resources to students. So this is, um, and one of the things that we will check is to make sure that your, uh, your gap groups are being addressed um, through your activities, at least one of your activities. Okay, scrolling down, um, I'm just about to close. What grade levels um, are you implementing the activity with and then months? Um, so what months are you doing the activities this year? And then what months do you plan to do the activities in next year? And then after next year, we've given you, if you want a calendar that goes out for five years, or four years, we can do that if you need that for funding purposes. Um, but if you don't want to go out more than next year, just just click um, just click those. That that's to be determined. Okay, person uh, person who's responsible. 
Um, so you could say someone not listed here, and then that gives you a blank, and you can fill that in. Okay, so that's how to enter activities. Um, you can see that entering all of your activities, that's going to take a chunk of time. Um, if you can delegate that to other steering team members, if, you can, if you've got more than one counselor and you can split this up, um, you know, that would, be, that would be wonderful. So, okay. Then, um, one other resource I want to show you in the, um, on the process page, and then I'll close. But this is a really nifty tool. Um, in activities, um, there's a step here that says explore school counseling activities. This is a database of all of the thousands of activities um, that are in our system. So you can click um, the school counseling lesson plans. You can click um, uh, reports that people have written after doing site visits to schools to research their school counseling programs. You can research community-based activities. Um, you can look up goals that are similar to yours and see what advice other schools will give you um, based on um, whether or not they were able to reach their goals or not. So, um, for example, um, here are some of the goals that are in, in demo schools. I could see, um, well, let's pick out one here. Um, I can see, I don't know actually what's in here, but let's just, Let's just do decision making. Nope. So, but you can see the format. Um, if schools are doing this this as well, we ask them to give advice if they've met the goal. Here's advice from schools who have met that goal, and here's advice from schools that did not meet that similar goal. So that's kind of a cool report. Um, I really want to go into this lesson plan database. Um, let's say in your crosswalk report that one of your focus goals was um, uh, to teach kids about the FAFSA, and you don't have any activities in there to hit it, and you want to do that. One of the things that you can do is just put in a keyword here. I don't know what I'm going to get, but we'll find out. So I'm going to search for FAFSA. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of activity of lesson plans in our database, and I'm just going to hit search. And in this case, I did have a hit. Um, here's FAFSA completion night. Um, it, this was being implemented by South Newton Senior High School. And the important thing I want you to see here is that there are eight schools that like this lesson enough that they imported it into their school counseling program. So if this sounds interesting, you can click here and view the entire lesson plan. And if you really like this one, what you can do is just click Import into My School's Lesson Plans. And that takes the lesson, or the, yeah, the lesson, and puts it into your school's lessons. And in this case, it would give Laura Robbins a citation. Um, you can change it then. You can tweak it, whatever, um, so it you know more more um, more matches your needs in your school. Um, but you can start out with a lesson that's already written instead of having to start from scratch. Um, this, looking at the number of other schools that have imported it, is a really good way to kind of get a quality check on that lesson. Um, you know, some of our lesson plans have been imported 40 times. And if so, you know, that's probably a pretty good, a pretty good lesson. Um, the other thing is it, when you are entering, um, when you look at the crosswalk for the Indiana Gold Star, for the Indiana indicators that you need to meet for Gold Star. Let's say there's one indicator that you haven't met and you can't get it, you know, you're don't, not sure what to do about it. If I click on indicators and I, you know, I can just pick out any indicator um, and, um, and so I'm putting that one, let's say I, I'm putting this one in that I'm going to search for and then I do the search and then I have I have the pick one that didn't have any, but um, that will that will pull up all the lesson plans that address this indicator. So that's that's kind of another way to kind of search for lessons. Okay, I think that's it. Um, the only other thing 
let's see, back on activities um, that I wanted to point out. After your meeting, so you're having, um, you're having your conducting meeting five. Um, actually, I think the PowerPoint said meeting six. I'll get that switched to. Um, you're conducting meeting five, and then we're asking you to update your school counseling activities. When you click um, on that, oops, I'm sorry, we're enter, asking you to update here. When you click on this enter, it's going to bring you to the same page that you went to when you entered the activities for the first time. So you're just tweaking on this step. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, so the big deal is getting them in there the first time, then have your meeting, and then tweak them. Okay, that's all I got. Um, I, I've been talking for a long time. Um, I know that a lot of this is a lot of information. Please, please, please call us if you have questions. Um, I know that when you start to use this information, it, um, it, you know, sometimes something that seemed logical doesn't seem logical anymore. And that's the point where please call Tina. Um, and if, if, you know, that's, if, if you're still having trouble after talking to Tina, um, Tina will, will refer you to me and, you know, we can chat about anything that seems confusing to you. So, okay, so that's it. I'm going to check one more time for questions. And I don't think I'm seeing any. No, not. Okay. Okay. Um, so one more webinar next month, and um, and then that will be it. Um, the portfolios are due, I think, June fifteenth, um, for us to do our final reviews for Gold Star or Gold Star Renewal. Um, so yeah, so we'll talk about those final steps in our next webinar, and then that will be it. But big congratulations. You, you got through all those foundations, and you know that's, that's I think, really the hard part, and it's, it's, it's hard to do that. There's not a lot of energy like activities bring about. So, um, so yeah, so very good, and, and call us when you get stuck. Thanks so much, everyone.